restaurants make up 4% of our GDP and employ 11 million people and 16 million people if you look at the other people in the supply chain. When COVID-19 struck, it affected all corners of the economy, but the restaurant industry was hit especially hard. The pandemic has forced us to move a lot faster and ahead than we initially had planned to. The unemployment rate is twice the national average, and we're at risk of losing permanently tens of thousands of restaurants. The restaurant industry as a whole has lost an estimated $290 billion in revenue from 2020 to 2021, with approximately 90,000 restaurants across the United States closing permanently. As the pandemic continues, restaurants are forced to constantly adapt and evolve. There's an immense amount of opportunity for collective innovation and collaboration as we move through this phase and into a recovery phase. And I'm excited about what we can create and how we can stitch this industry and our communities back together better than they ever were before. So, which restaurants will survive and what will restaurants look like in this new world? Pre-pandemic 2019, that has a lot of great memories. We actually opened fourth quarter of 2019. We had, you know, a full staff. We were actually becoming like a family, getting into the flow of things. During the holidays, we were extra busy because we were new, we were rocking. Business was good. It was looking likely that, you know, I'd maybe be able to start paying myself at the end of that summer. At the beginning, it was easier to have the mindset of, okay, we're just getting through this week by week, you know, month by month. And then towards the end, it started getting really tiring. <laughs> you know, there's only so much of, um, oh, we're just hanging on, hanging on that you can do. And we did, and we, I felt like we, we did a great job through all of that. But at the end, I was starting to lose sleep. I was starting to be concerned because we were so new, we didn't have a lot of cash flow. When March 15th came, there was a lot of trepidation. Just the fear of the unknown existed. I was paralyzed. We were devastated. No one had experienced that before. That was a dire moment for me to say that, you know, I don't know when you're going to come back to work. I had no answers. No one provided us with guidance. They really struggled on trying to figure out, okay, can we do a takeout menu? How are we going to do that? They were so focused on the customer experience inside the four walls of the restaurant and shifting to, okay, we need to make revenue. We need to figure out a delivery platform and a takeout menu. Usually the larger chains that had invested in digital, that had invested in a mobile order and pay app or some sort of online ordering, they were able to pivot much quicker than those that had not invested in technology and had not invested in a digital customer experience or an ordering platform. It was a day-by-day -day learning process. It was a learning curve every single day. Unfortunately, some of these things, you know, cost money. You know, they require financial resources that we simply did not have. All of those shifts and those decisions were made independently for different restaurants. And depending on where you were on the spectrum of technology, comfortability, safety, and the local guidelines. And so you had different restaurants doing different things. Even if these adaptations were applied, restaurant owners still face supply chain issues, labor shortages, and losses of revenue. Restaurants were struggling getting certain products. They were struggling getting certain meats, and then there were certain paper products, whether it be straws or paper. Or, so that was a huge hindrance. You can't just flip a switch back on and, and have all the products that you need immediately flowing through the supply chain. And so restaurants are faced with increased costs on products ranging from proteins to cooking oils to even things as simple as a to-go box. We are in a massive labor shortage. We have a supply chain shortage in terms of actual goods and services that we're able to procure. I've had to change my menu so many times because I'm not able to procure everything that's needed for certain recipes. I would say from staff, we need quality staff and we need training for our staff. As a result, quality does suffer on many ends and the level of service you do have does suffer a little bit. Help also came in the form of federal assistance, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. 
The Restaurant Revitalization Fund provides debt-free support in the amount of annual revenue loss from 2019 and 2020, with special provisions for businesses that opened in 2019 and 2020. The Restaurant Revitalization Fund grants were awarded to businesses whose primary purpose is that they are a place where people gather to consume food or drink. So your neighborhood coffee shop, your favorite date night restaurant would qualify. Then they needed to demonstrate that they lost revenue in 2020. And they did that by providing things like tax returns and point of sale reports. We were able to secure $28.6 billion uh, to be able to help these independent restaurants. Uh, over 100,000 grants were distributed. But passing a bill and actually getting the money into the hands of struggling restaurateurs are two different things. As soon as the application went live, I got my application in within moments. And then I got an approval, and then I got a letter stating that because of a lawsuit that had happened, the SBA was not able to pay out those funds. The need far outstripped that. The fund was basically exhausted in just a few days. It just felt like a slap across the face and wondering what's next and how are we going to be able to keep up with this demand and grow without cash flow. We have no cash reserves. We sound a bit like a broken record, constantly calling our members of Congress and telling them that restaurants aren't okay despite appearances. Well, bear in mind, uh, we've been dealing with the near collapse of the economy. There are massive needs that have developed all across the country for health. There's a lot of demand, there's a lot of competition. There are over $60 billion of needs that remain when the fund was exhausted. So what we're trying to do is replenish it so that everybody who was eligible and applied would be able to be taken care of. We have a situation where restaurants are still dealing with the up and down enclosures, increased costs, hesitant consumers, so they really need financial assistance to give them the foundation to be able to continue to operate and to continue to recover as we ride out this wave. If you drive anywhere in the U.S. and you see a restaurant, there's going to be a sign outside that says help wanted or that they're enticing people with a $15 per hour incentive or some, some restaurants have gone to $17 an hour because they can't staff their restaurants. We have one member of our coalition uh, who has over $1.5 million in deferred rent payments. You're not going to pay that off with just one busy Saturday. And at the end of the day, it's not all about the money. Health is more important than business at the end of the day. And if we need to shut down because it's saving lives, we'll do it. That's why we stayed takeout only, because we were too small to space people out appropriately. But that's scary. Despite the obstacles and the Delta variant threatening to beat back the progress they've made, some restaurant owners remain cautiously optimistic for the future. I have a lot of trepidation about the fall and the winter because we all know that the more people come indoors, the more closer contact you become with people that, that the virus can spread faster. The pandemic happening gave me a chance to kind of step back and reevaluate our operation. You know, the kitchen's very, very small. It's a two-person kitchen. And just to kind of see how it is um, from their standpoint and, you know, just find ways to be more efficient. I don't think that the restaurants will go to a fully automated platform. I do feel like there will be a healthy balance as they try to figure out the labor and wage shortage between automation and human labor. We need consumers, you know, obviously to show up and support our small businesses, but we need patience and understanding. And if a restaurant's gonna require you to wear a mask, it's not what they wanna do. That's not fun for them. It's what they need to do to make sure that their employees aren't sick um, or that the economy doesn't shut down again. We do need them to continue dining out in any way that they feel comfortable, whether that's sitting on a patio, whether it's purchasing to-go food, going inside dining, which in some places is quite safe and lovely. It's also to be patient. These restaurants may not have your favorite dish right now because the supply chain isn't allowing them to purchase the ingredients they need. Also, you might notice that prices have increased and there's only so much you can squash down a menu price when everything that is going into making your dinner, whether that's the ingredients or the folks preparing your food, um, has a price. The restaurant industry has stepped up. They've provided critical service. They've been innovative 
And in many cases, they have stepped up to help people who otherwise wouldn't have access to this healthy food. Restaurants are going to be front and center of any sort of economic recovery. They deserve our support. One of the silver linings that you don't see when you're dining is that these independent restaurants uh, across the country have always been the places where you go when you need help, whether it's um, donating something to the Little League team or the school auction or just creating an incredible environment where you can go hang out with your girlfriends after a really bad day. They've always been giving. And this is the first time that they've really had to ask for help. And I think that this community has found their voice and found how powerful their voices can be in creating change, not just for them, but for their communities.